I remember reading a book a number of years ago where the author was very insistent that all we need is Jesus, and Jesus is enough, and we don't need anything but Jesus. We don't need these fam- fancy formulas about Jesus. We don't need all of the church's theological musings. We just need Jesus. And th- <laughs> that sort of argument on the face of it can sound really spiritual. I mean, who wants to, to disagree what Christian wants to say? No, we, we, we don't need Jesus. Of course we need Jesus. Of course Jesus is enough. Of course Jesus is sufficient. But when you, when you press on that a little bit, it, it hardly makes sense because when we say Jesus is enough or all we need is Jesus, we have to ask the next one, well, what is it about Jesus that makes him all that we need? Or if Christianity is all about Jesus, what is it about Jesus that we want to be all about? As soon as you start to say something about Jesus, if you say, well, it's because of what he did on the cross or because of the resurrection or because of how much he loves us or because of his teaching. Once you begin to answer the question, you've gone into the realm of theology. So folks who think, I want Jesus, not theology, they don't have either because you, you can't have Jesus and have him mean something to you unless you know some propositions about him. If uh, I tell you how much I love my wife and how amazing my wife is, and then you say, well, tell me um, how tall is she? And I say, eh, I don't really know. Well, tell me what color are her eyes. I say, I'm not really into those sort of things about her. Well, not, not only would, would you question how much I really love her, you, you would wonder if I could pick her out in a crowd. I, I don't seem to know anything about her. I don't seem to know any propositions, any facts. I, you know, am I just speaking in vague generalities? And the same is true with Jesus. We can speak in these spiritual platitudes of how much we love Jesus, but we need theology if we're going to explain who he is, the God-man, what he accomplished on the cross in his death and resurrection, and what it means for him to be reigning at the Father's right hand, to be the second person of the Trinity, to come back again to judge the living and the dead, to send his Holy Spirit to be the very presence with us in the world. All of these things get into the realm of theology. So there is no Jesus without some theological parameters and some robust filling out and filling up of what we mean about Jesus. And, and, and he himself taught this, unless you know that I am he, unless you confess that I've come from the Father, all of these great declarations, the I am statements in the book of John, Jesus would not have had patience for people who said, I just want Jesus, you, and I, I'm not interested in learning about you, in understanding what sort of Messiah you are. No, if we're going to have Jesus, we need to have theology. And, and he doesn't stop there. He, he goes on to say not only is the gospel important, but so is the good doctrine that flows out of it. Uh, I was t- at dinner last night. I was telling I had a painful moment here. I, I still have some rage issues that the Lord's working on in me. Um, I get provoked easily about certain things, and um, it might just be age. I might mellow as, as I get older, but the, I, I was at a conference. It was a very large conference, and um, I'm backstage eating um, with some of the other speakers, and a guy and, and a friend of mine who's here on the front row was there. He, he, he called me the Bible guy, like it was a condescending term. Oh, yeah, you're the, you're the Bible guy. The Bible guy? Shouldn't we all be the Bible guy, dum dum? I mean, how do you do what we do if you're not a Bible guy? See, here's here's something that's happened specifically in a, in the younger crowd. Somehow, hyper fundamentalism and doctrine have become synonymous, and then we're lost as to why worship's faded. Seeing God rightly stirs the affections of the soul. If you see him wrongly, then even with affection stirred. Okay, maybe I can do it like this. Let's say, let's say I just feel really stirred up towards my wife. I don't know what did it. I, I, I just, all of a sudden, I'm just like, I love that woman. And so I walk in our house and she's sitting on the couch and I get down on my knees and I grab and put my hands right just on her calves and I look her in the face and I just say, there's something. 
Baby, I love you so much. Like, my heart hurts right now. I love you so much. I don't know if it's your black hair or your deep brown eyes, but I, I am crazy about you. And, and some of you might go, well, you know, that's really sweet, Chandler. It, it would be really sweet, except my wife's a blonde. And she has blue eyes. So it's going to go bad for me. Even, you know, maybe not bad for you, all right? It's going to go bad for me. Baby, it's just your brown hair. It's just your... She doesn't have brown hair. She has blonde hair. She has seen him rightly, correctly, leads to progressive sanctification, leads to humility, leads to godliness. 